Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India in the series on fintech. In the first lecture we studied, we saw the learned rather the basics of fintech, what is fintech and what is it all about, what are the areas it affects, what are the new concepts it brings, how is it different, um, different technologies involved, different domains of finance that are being affected by fintech and the characteristics of fin fintech, the term itself. In the second lecture, we saw the basics of one of the components of fintech that is money, the concept of money, how it has evolved over a period of time, how in what forms and how is it different in the digital world, the concept of digital crash and cryptocurrency and one of the key issues that it needs to be addressed by this field by fintech before we could adopt money in its new form in the digital form that is the problem of double spending. In this lecture, we will address one other aspect which is critical to fintech, critical to information technology as such and especially so to fintech because fintech heavily depends upon this particular technology for its success for to do things the way it does in the real world and that is the field of cryptography. In fact, the word cryptocurrency comes from cryptography in fact. So, that is the importance of this term even though cryptocurrencies are derived directly from this term every aspect of fintech is touched and fintech is a success today because of this science, this uh, concept called, called cryptography. So, let us take a look, let us take a look at this new field called cryptography. For the importance of cryptography is that it is the foundation of a lot of technologies of crypt, uh, fintech especially of blockchain blockchain is a key technology underlying fintech today and the foundation of blockchain is cryptography. Security as I mentioned everything in fintech exists as information, there is no physical token, there is no human presence. So, everything exists as information as set of digits and information as easy as it is to copy to transfer the same qualities make it difficult for us to protect it also because it is easy the problem of double spending arises. More importantly, if somebody steals, if somebody steals my purse or wallet, I would know that somebody has stolen it because I no longer have, have the wallet in my pocket. If however, if somebody steals a file on my system, there will still have original copy left, same that double spending. So, when information is transmitting over the internet, which may be going by the, by the Wi-Fi, by over the wire or in any other form, it can be stolen it can be stolen without us being aware of it. It could be modified without being aware of it to result in unintended consequences. So, securing information is a very, very critical element in all of information technology especially in fintech. And when we talk about security today, it is not like posting a guard outside the door or locking the door. To protect the house today, we need to do multiple things. Likewise, in case of information security also, there are multiple aspects to that different dimensions which need to be protected. It is not enough that we do one. We may do all this high technology thing, thing, but if you leave the door open that still lets somebody to come in and steal the information using a flash drive for example or a USB. So, there are multiple dimensions and a security experts have identified three critical dimensions along which information has to be secured. One is it conveniently forms the acronym of CIA. The first one is the C stands for confidentiality. Information while it should be available for people who need to have that information like my bank needs to my know my KYC details, the bank will possess my account numbers. Likewise, if I want to accept money from somebody else through an online transfer, they need to know my account number without it they cannot do the transfer. So, information needs to be available, but it should not be available for people who are trying to do something malicious somebody is trying to 
hack into a bank's database and steal information. They should not have access to my account number. They should not be allowed to have the access to the password for the database. People who are, are operate on the database need to share the password, but nobody else should. So, confidentiality means that information should be available only to those who have a need for it. Without it, work will not happen, but at the same time, it should be protected from everybody else who should not have access to information. Just like people who need to enter the house should be able to have a key, copy of the key, nobody else. So, one dimension of security is called confidentiality. The second dimension is integrity. Again, while information is there, somebody people there are said some people who are authorized should be allowed to change it. If I deposit money to my account, a program or somebody who is controlling a program should be allowed to increase the balance on my account. The field which stores my account and the balance should not be locked for everybody. It should be allowed for people who are allowed to change that. When I do a money transfer, there should be a program which deducts money for the amount of money that I am sending or increase it when I receive money. At the same time again, nobody else should be allowed to touch that number. Otherwise, imagine if somebody who has access to the database can change the numbers in everything and steal money without nobody being aware of that. So, this aspect of giving the capability to change only to those who should be allowed to change and those who change should be recorded. Every bit of action done to my balance should be recorded in an in in a log what is called a log file or a ledger. So, but nobody else should be allowed to touch that balance. Somebody handling the loan and mortgages should be allowed to look at only their piece of data and change that whereas, somebody ha handling our basic uh, um, fixed deposits and things like that should be allowed to look at only fixed deposit data. So, this aspect of information first one availability to only to those people who are authorized to look at it. Second the capability to uh, change the authorization to change be made available to only to those people who are allowed to who are required to do it otherwise business will not continue. So, that aspect is called integrity confidentiality integrity. Third aspect is called availability information may be there untouched, but for if so for whatever reason the firewall is brought down if the server is brought down we cannot access the information. I am a big e a big company I have announced a big sale online in e-commerce. I have announced that on this particular day so many deals are available. So, I do spend lot of money advertising this event. I do bring special prices so that items move on that particular day. However, on that particular day if the firewall is taken off or if the server comes down or if the database is offline that my whole effort my whole money I have spent in marketing this big sale will go for a toss. So, the third aspect is information should be available when needed. If we do not have the information when we have available, if we do not have the information available when needed, it is as good as not having information. So, availability is the third dimension of information security, confidentiality, integrity, availability. There are different different tools, uh, techniques, products to address each one of these and cryptography addresses two of them, confidentiality and integrity. It can ensure that information is available only to those people who need to have it can ensure <coughs> that people are not allowed to change those who are not or at least if somebody does change in an unauthorized manner that becomes obvious. It becomes clear to everyone that this information has been changed in an unauthorized manner. It is typically in, uh, in the fintech world it is called tampering and tamper proof. Tampering is being able to change the information, tamper proof is they may change, but it becomes visible to everyone. We all know that the information has been changed so that we can take actions to set it back. So, confidentiality addresses two out of the three this is called a, a IT security troika or IT security th uh, three key dimensions uh, crypto cryptography addresses two of them. So, together if we ensure confidentiality integrity and security we can ensure security of data and operations and for that for two of these two dimensions we use encryption. So, let us look at the basics again cryptography or cryptology is the practice and study of techniques for secure communications in the presence of third parties called adversaries. So, it is a technique for storing it is not just communications 
storing and communication even when data is at rest in data is on a system systems need, we need to we need to procure we need to secure the information we need to make sure that somebody cannot attack our system and steal our data so we it's a practice and study of techniques for storing and transmitting information in the presence of third parties called adversaries there are a lot of people who are interested in stealing our information if one were to read some of the key literature in this field you will be surprised the kind of people the government may want to see with whom we are communicating our enemies want to see whom we are communicating with there are people waiting to steal our credit number credit card number there are people who are trying to steal our identity they can pose as us online if somebody has not seen or what is visible live can be stolen and used by somebody called identity theft somebody may call a credit card company posing as me and bill certain amounts to my credit card number say that my credit card number has been my credit card has been stolen ask for a replacement under their and then use that in my name so whether information is stored on our system or is being sent somewhere information needs to be secure and one way of doing it is cryptography or cryptology some key concepts incidentally cryptography is the art of cryptography it has reached advanced stage now new techniques have come but the concept itself is quite old one of the oldest types of cryptography is called the caesar uh, caesar cipher or caesar cryptography apparently what julius caesar used to do uh, we will say a very simple example of that when he needed to send commands when he sent needed to send orders to his generals out in the field somewhere he needed to send them in a written form but in a form that nobody else could read so the caesar cipher what it does we'll see an example of that is he used to shift every letter by a fixed number which he had told the general less in advance before they go so the whole whole document that he is sending would be in that shifted form and unless somebody knew what exactly by how much it was shifted they could not guess what was being sent so it goes back to military time i mean the concept has come predominantly from military and it goes back to roman times where they were deploying a simple form of cryptography and uh, another form they used to do was to write the whole document on a sheet of paper like this break it into strips like this so now it's in some gibberish form in the form of a strip and they would take the paper break it into strip where uh, uh, cover a cover a rod with this strip and then write so when somebody untangles this they cover this the rod with this the rod will be like this they'll be it will be covered by strips of leather paper what have you then they'll write on this when you open it they don't form consecutive sequences only when you wrap it up around a rod of a similar size can you exactly make sense of what it was so this was another kind of cryptography that was being followed so cryptography has a long his, in the interesting history and uh, today we are deploying it not for military for but for similar purposes in much more um, advanced form at the same time there is also an art of people trying to break the cryptography and that is equally important whenever we come up with an algorithm proving that algorithm is safe requires that people attack the algorithm and try to break it when nobody is able to break it or at least nobody is able to break it easily in real time then we can say that that particular algorithm that particular cryptography is safe so it's been a long uh, history and it's being used today some key concepts before we learn to cryptography we need to understand what these are one is plain text i want to send a message to all my students that you have passed this is called plain text the message the information we need to send i want to send my credit card number safely so i type it convert it into some other form when they decrypt it they should be able to recover my credit card number only then they'll be able to charge my credit card account and i can buy the item so i do some magic on this and this becomes a set of gibberish something like this this is called cipher text what we convert from plain text we are converted that into this this is called 
so if a text the method we convert whatever magic we do here to convert this to this is called the algorithm one of the elements that the algorithm uses we can use the same algorithm every time if i use the same term with the same algorithm for a period of time somebody smart or somebody with a lot of computing power can see the pattern and break it so every time i should use the algorithm in such a way that first time it results in this second times it may result in this so every time we use the same algorithm as the same text to be in the safer side it should result in a different safer text and the way algorithms ensure this is they use a different key every time it's almost like we don't want to change the lock but we change the key every time encryption is the process of converting plain text into cipher text decryption to for this information to be useful somebody who receives this should be able to convert this back that's called the cryptography a simple example the one i had mentioned i want to have a class of students and i need to sell send them their test results confidentially whether they have passed or failed so let me see how i can ensure use encryption to make sure that everybody gets a message and only they can decrypt it to make sure that they know their results somebody else stealing that bunch of characters encrypted characters will not be able to make out whether that particular student has passed or failed so i this is the this is my plain text i want to en enter the word pass or fail now for each student in the class along with a question paper i distribute a number each student will have a different number so for one student let's say the number is 5 so the algorithm i'm going to follow I have, what i'm told the student is what you are going to receive is the, the term pass or fail shifted by 5 so let's see for this student what he receives he or she p becomes q r s t u a becomes f a b c d e f s and s becomes s s t u v w x so this student receives a u f x x now he has been told to use the process in reverse his question paper had this number 5 written time confidentially nobody else knows each student's question paper also has a slip of paper folded which has this particular number they have been told that whatever gibberish you receive you shift the letters back by the number you have been told that you have been told in your question paper so this student has received the the term uf xx he works back from u shifts by 5 he gets p f becomes a xx becomes pass likewise if it were to be fail f this becomes g h i j k a is the same f i j k l m n l m n o p q k f n q anyone re who receives this unless they know this number how many characters to shift back they will not be able to find the find out find out the original term so i can confidentially send e email is not protected email is free anybody who can intercept on the email can intercept our email and read it so i can send him an email safely using this mechanism so that every student gets his results pass or fail in a confidential manner so this simple example covers all aspects of cryptography if i were to exp explain cryptography in brief this simple example suffices actually so this as i said is um, plain text what it get gets converted is the act of encryption we encrypt it and convert it into cipher text the process i follow what am i doing i'm shifting it i'm shifting the characters by some number in my case for this student it is 5 that process is called encryption no and the process is called the algorithm the method i follow to convert the plain text into cipher text is called the algorithm and this 5 is the key 5 is the key to so in so that if i try this algorithm for every student so far as i constantly keep saving the changing the key the uh, the term the cipher text they are going to receive will be going to be going to be different in every case 
So, even if some this student by carelessness gives out his key to somebody who wants to still break this encryption with that key he can only break that particular case he cannot break any other any other students uh, received term or the cipher text. So, this process of sending converting plain text into cipher text is called uh, encryption converting cipher text back to plain text is called decryption. Uh, there are many other characteristics which we will follow so we will see in the following slides, but in in sum this is pretty much is essence of cryptography. We take a plain text use some mechanism use a key to change it every time convert it into cipher text transfer it we now we can transfer it in public to somebody because nobody will be able to um, break it and they will use the algorithm and the key to convert it back we will see that is called two way encryption and uh, so this the pardon the pun the key to this process is the key that means somebody may know that the algorithm is shifting in fact this is the caesar algorithm caesar used to do this julius caesar used to do this this is called as a caesar algorithm so they may know that i am using the caesar algorithm they may even have assumed that i am doing it in english i don't have to do this in english i could have sent it in french if they knew french in fact language itself can be a basic form of cryptography unless somebody knows the language if i am talking to somebody unless the others overhearing know the language they will not be able to make sense out of what we see in fact apparently this was used in world war when in the japanese theater when american soldiers used one of the native Indian languages to talk to each other because the Japanese did not know what it was. Nobody can figure out what language they are speaking. So, language itself is a form of encoding or encryption, but that is not strong enough we take recourse to algorithms like this. So, the key is to keep the key secret. So, far as the key is secret even if you know what the algorithm is, even if you know what the language is you will not be able to break the encryption. So, the strength of the algorithm depends on strength of the and keeping the key secret. So, this is a very simple example, but it encapsulates all the basic concepts of encryption and decryption of course. Let me go to the next. So, let us dive a little deeper. So, I hope everybody got the idea plain text, cipher text, algorithm, key, encryption, decryption. Now, one type of encryption, there are many many types of encryption even though that example was simple we have gone a long way we are trying different different things for different purposes one type of encryption is called two way encryption what we mean by that is i have generated a plain text and resulted in cipher text from cipher text i am able to recover the plain text this is plain text this is a cipher i have gotten back my plain text bulk of encryption works this way we are able to convert into yes, cipher text and we need to convert it back to original text that is how we can do business. I send my credit card it gets encrypted either by the application itself or by the browser or what have you that information transmits safely to the bank or uh, the e-commerce company when they are able to decrypt it they will get my they have to get my original credit card number find out if it is valid approve the sale only then I am able to do any transaction. Likewise, I send my bank account number to a third party for money transfer. They should be able to recover my mon my bank account number there, make sure it is valid and then deposit money to my account. Otherwise, mistake may happen, money get made dep deposited to somebody else's account. This kind of encryption where we convert plain text into cipher text and or recover the plain text later is called a two way encryption and often times we use the same key for both. There are various commercially successful algorithms which are all based on two way encryption. The US military started with one kind of encryption called DES digital encryption system which was originated by IBM. When that was found to be weak and was about to be broken people uh, found ways to break this and recover the plain text. Then an advanced version called triple DES came. DES used a 56 bit key I said key is the key the length of the key and type of the key it used to be a 56 bit number constantly changing for every transmission as its key it was multiplied by 3 168 that became the key for triple desk. Triple desk is still considered safe and uh, today a new standard is used especially for US military purposes for other purposes so it has been publicly released called AES advanced encryption system and all these are examples of 
two way encryption. And by the way before we go into one way encryption, I should mention one type of encryption to which no system is immune. There is one type of uh, encryption no system is immune. So, let us say in my class there are 36 students, there are 36 students and I have told the class that all of you will get a two digit number. In my class there are 36 students to cover them I need two digit numbers, I can give one digit two not a problem, I can get either a one digit or a two digit number. So, I have a choice between 1 to 99 to shift this if I if I say to my class that you have a two digit number 1 to 99 are the possible numbers to shift the plain text into uh, cipher text. If somebody is really keen they can try all numbers for every student they can try all the numbers ultimately you end up with breaking all the students numbers. You are not you are not guessing you are not trying to guess which is the key you are trying all the numbers it is like combination locks if I have a three ring combination locks some of the suitcases have three ring combinations locks right. How many numbers are possible? They can go from 000 to 999 a total of 1000 combinations are possible. If somebody gets a suitcase in a suitable secluded place they can try all 1000 combinations ultimately they will break it. You are not guessing you are making it you are not uh, finding new ways of breaking it you are not using any scientific uh, principle just try all combinations. The idea is nobody will have so much time to try all those combinations before somebody get found out somebody notices that they are trying to break the combination lock which might work in the physical world. But in the computer world how much time does it take to try 1000 combinations seconds in seconds a computer can try all these numbers and break. So, this kind of attack this kind of attack to break the cryptography no system is truly immune to this except for one kind of system I will explain what it is this kind of attack is called a brute force attack you try So, all the algorithms no algorithm can really withstand except one one type of encryption can withstand a brute force attack and with computers getting faster and faster it becomes much more easier and easier. So, today art of encryption is we know that it is it is not immune to brute force attack we just want to make it so difficult that a computer may take days together weeks together months together to break that break the algorithm using a brute force attack. In fact, most algorithms today are measured in terms of what is its resistance to brute force attack. If somebody were to use the most powerful computer available today how long does it take it has been calculated that some of these strong algorithms it may take them thousands of years to break using the fastest computers today using the brute force attack. Hence we say that that algorithm is safe today, but as computers get faster and faster that period keeps compressing. So, that is the that is the most difficult aspect of uh, cryptography that any algorithm we do we try to break the thieves that we try to break the parties by making it most difficult for them to break it using a brute force attack except that most systems today are, are um, well not vulnerable to other types of attacks like somebody guessing it somebody trying to do something else recover it and things like that. So, that is two way encryption it is amenable to all these are amenable to brute force attacks, but they are strong enough that it takes a they cause the algorithms are so complex even the most powerful computers today may take thousands of years to try all the combinations. The other type of encryption is called one way encryption let us see what it means. This is the plain text I want to send the one way encryption is also called hashing hash array hashing. So, I do hashing on this combination this hashing algorithm results in a cipher text of the fixed length in every case does not matter how long is my plain text it results in a fixed length cipher of a fixed length cipher and you can never recover the original term from the hash this is called a hash or a digest this sometimes is also called a message digest. Every hashing algorithm results in a hash of a fixed length in terms of bits and you can never recover the original text once you do the hashing. 
So, that is called one way encryption, we encrypt will not be able to decrypt, fail. I mean in this case coincidence both the uh, texts have the same length of uh, same number of letters the hash is this a 12 byte uh, uh, hash 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12. So, whatever be the text I give to this hashing of algorithm the net output the cipher text will be a 12 byte uh, text string string of letter uh, alphanumeric string. I can give the whole Ramayana into this hashing algorithm it also results in a 12 uh, character string. This process is called hashing. I cannot recover if I have access to all of these even if I know what the, what is the algorithm used I am not able to recover I will not be able to recover the original text. So, you may wonder where is this used where is this useful I cannot recover my whatever that the original text was. So, what is the use of this? these are some of the algorithms let me go come back to that later. So, where is this useful? It will be interested to know one of the most common things that we use every day uses this kind of algorithm the passwords to, to wait the passwords we use are always stored as a hash. So, how do, how do we log in? I log in enter my password which I am being a lazy fellow my password is abc123 it goes through the hashing process it results in this. Some hash whatever it is. Now, this is what is stored on the server first time I create my password this is what is stored on the server. So, every time I enter my password every time I enter abc the system the login system calculates the hash again. and compares the two it does not decrypt it does not decrypt it it cannot it hashes my thing again and compares the two if they match I am let in. The beauty is if somebody stores steals this file where all the passwords are stored they cannot recover the original password using the hash that is one of the most common uses of hashing as we will see it is also a key component of blockchains it is come back in this form. So, in that sense hashing has become hashing or a one way encryption has become very important for the encryption process and this is called a one way encryption because we hash it and leave it we encrypt it and leave it we will not be able to recover the plain text. And some very commonly used hashing algorithms use message digest 5 secure hash algorithm 1 the original one which came up with a 128 uh, bit st string now we have SHA 256 which results in a 250 bit uh, hash we have SHA 512, SHA 1024, SHA 2048 generally longer is considered better, but hashing can also be a very complex operation computing wise we will see that this is one of the keys to blockchain it is the keys to be blockchains becoming tamper proof hash proof is because the complexity that can be built into a hash algorithm it can be pretty simple it can go it can get quite complex also. So, this is the second type of encryption one way encryption which has acquired new meaning today it is acquired new use today th thanks to it is wide wide use in blockchains. So, one is one way encryption second is two way encryption let us look at the third one third way way of classifying. So, one way to classify is one way encryption and two way encryption another way to classify is the based on the type of key. Let us go back to the example. This example the key to encrypt is 5, the key to decrypt is also 5, you could if you want you can say minus 5, but the basic uh, basic uh, digits of the key remain the same. We use the same key to encrypt and decrypt, it is like the lock in our home, we use the same lock to open the door, same lock to close the door this is called symmetric key, symmetric key encryption other than one way and two way another way of classifying is by the type of key we use one is symmetric key encryption. So, a lot of encryptions lot of two way encryptions use this because it is simple same key we use encryption and decryption are fairly 
simple and majority of encryptions like DAS, AES, they all use a symmetry key encryption. But there is a problem here, there is a problem in symmetry key encryption. What is the problem in me distributing my class grades in a confidential manner? I can send it by email safely using a simple CSR algorithm or whatever algorithm. The big problem is how do we ensure I am giving the same key to the users? If by chance I misplace the keys of two people, that uh, the folded sheet of paper, if I misplace between two people, they can probably break each other's algorithm, for example. It is a challenge. If I have a class of 36 students, that is easy, somehow I can manage. What if we do it in online education courses? What we want to use it in credit, credit, getting credit card numbers? What we want to do whenever we send Aadhaar numbers today? How do we use it in the case of booking tickets on IRCTC? Literally millions of transactions are going. How do we ensure the key is safely transmitted to each one of them? Only the two parties know for every transaction. So, the key distribution is a key challenge in symmetric encryption and uh, that problem got solved in a very brilliant unexpected manner, where we do not have to worry about distributing keys at all. Now, it is a big challenge now, it is a big challenge how to safely, remember the key to encryption is the key. So, we need to guard that to protect to make sure that everybody has the same key or other, every two parties, both the parties have the same key, it is a very big challenge. That problem was addressed in a very unexpected way by something called asymmetric encryption. Think about it for a second, think about what do we mean by that. Symmetric encryption, same key, same key to open the lock, close the lock. What if we had a key to open the lock and another key to close the lock? Is such a thing even possible? Lot of time for a long time people thought it was impossible. Finally, it was proven to brilliant mathematicians actually more than to have claimed credit for that now. Now, they have come up with an algorithm where to encrypt I use one key to decrypt I use another key. It is called a key pair and here since we use two different keys, it does not matter which we use to encrypt and which we key we use to decrypt, it can be reversed. We use key A to encrypt, use B to decrypt or use key B to encrypt and A to encrypt does not matter, but the keys are different. Let us see how it works and what is the brilliance of this and this is called asymmetric key encryption. So, I want to send the word pass, I use it encryption key x, the student receives this string u f x x, the decryption key is y and he can decrypt and get the, he or she can get the original text back. Now, what is the beauty here? The thing is for every combination I need to generate two keys, for every student I need to generate two keys and the students also generate two keys. So, one key everybody keeps secret, one key everybody keeps secret, other key they make it public. So, in this case for the combination work bear with me, the student generates a pair of keys this is a student public key, I will call it as SPK, this is the student private key, SPVK to differentiate between them. Each student generates a pair of keys, they make their public key public, anybody can go to the student's page or they can send it to me safely by email, no problem, even if somebody steals, no problem. For me to send for each student this character safely, to for this student A. I use A's yes public key, I use A's yes public key which is X, encrypt it, to decrypt it that student needs his private key. Who has the private key now? Only that particular student, nobody else has. So, the student does not have to worry about distributing the key at all, they can make it public. Everybody can go to their site, everybody can get the key from them in the form of an email, email or whatever, use that to confidentially send any message to that student. So, I can use that student's public key to confidentially send a message to that particular student, even if anybody else catches hold of it, steals it, they will not be able to decrypt it because the private key is only with that particular student. So, likewise every student can generate a pair of public and uh, private keys, they keep their public private key secret, public key they release it, whoever wants to send, I want to send their grades, use each student's public key, done. I do not have to write that number in a slip, fold it and give it to them. Likewise. If a student wants to communicate with me confidentially, 
then I publish, I generate two pairs of keys, make one key public, any student, they want to have a grievance, they want to tell me that this is wrong, they want more, more marks, they think they are not happy with my teaching. If they want to tell me confidentially, they take my public key, anybody can take it, encrypt it, send it to me. If that message is stolen by anybody else, you cannot make sense because only I have my private key and thus only I can decrypt it and I do not have to worry about distributing public keys. So, this severe problem of taking care of public key, uh, uh, distributing the key is avoided with this whole concept of asymmetric encryption. The mathematics is quite complex, depends on factoring uh, very large prime numbers and it is getting more and more complex all the time, but that is the secret to it. The net result is there is one key to encrypt, one key to decrypt. By generating two pairs of keys, two people can confidentially share any information without ever sharing their private key, without ever taking the trouble of keeping the key secret. They can in ensure their public key and the key distribution problem is solved. It, it can also be used for like a digital signature. Suppose, suppose I encrypt something using my key and send it to a student. I can do the other thing also, right? Instead of having each student generate their own key pair, no, that will not work. Suppose I want to send a message to a student using my encryption key. Remember, encryption key and decryption key are interchangeable. I use my key, encrypt it and make it public. All the student, tomorrow is a holiday. I want to message to everyone, but I do not want anyone else to know. So, I encrypt using my public key, send it to all the students. They can send by email. They all go back, download my private key, I mean my public key, decrypt it. So, I use my private key to encrypt something to send to all the students. The students take my public key and decrypt it. Tomorrow, I cannot deny that I send the message that tomorrow's class is cancelled. They can prove that only I could have sent that signature, that message because they could decrypt it using my public key. And my public key can decrypt only that has been encrypted by, by my private key. So, this is the science behind digital signature. That is when we send a message, if they, anybody can decrypt it using our public key, then it proves that only I could have sent that message because only I have the private key. This is the equivalent of signing a document. If I send you a memo with my signature, if I send a check, how, did, how is it proven that I have sent it because they match the signature? It proves that only I could have, it is assumed that signatures are unique. So, this is the way you can prove the authenticity of who has sent a message. If I encrypt it using my decrypt key, broadcast it across, if people can decrypt it using my public key which is publicly available, it proves that only I could have sent it, equivalent of a signature. So, this asymmetric encryption has amazing number of uses and the and one of them is key distribution, other is digital signatures, a number of applications are there, lot of things that SSL that we use, that is that is what makes our internet safe or browser safe. If HTTPS, HTTP is the common browser beginning, URL beginning, if it is re replaced with HTTPS, you might have seen, many times it does. It means it has been encrypted and it, it uses asymmetric key encryption very heavily. Okay. So, that is the beauty, mathematically it is very, very complex, but it has been accomplished, it has been used and put a vast number of users solving this huge problem. Like in case of digital cash, we have to solve the problem of double spending. In encryption, the problem to be solved, the most difficult problem to be solved was key distribution that has been addressed by asymmetric encryption. Sometimes this is also called PKI, private key infrastructure, digital signatures, they all leverage the same uh, process, same technology. PKI, private key algorithm, digital certificates, SSL, all he heavily leverage asymmetric encryption. So, it is even today it is a wonder how we did that, how they came up with this concept. So, there are types of encryption, there are various kinds of, uh, those two are two, two, four different varieties, one way encryption, two way encryption, symmetric key, asymmetric key, they address different, different aspects of the whole gamut of encryption to keep our information safe. The safest encryption, which is not amenable, which cannot be broken using brute force is called one time pad. What it is, 
it is like in the old days we used to get this uh, big paper calendars, every day we strip off one, one, one piece, the next day's date will show, it is like that. Suppose we want to, end, uh, in, want to exchange 100 messages, when we distribute, when we separate, we print such thing, we print 100 pages with a different key on each page. The first message I want to send it to everyone, I send the message using this key, destroy that key. So, they once they get the message, use the same key to decrypt it and destroy that key. So, second time all of us use a different thing, third time all of us use a, so no brute force can break what are we sending, it could be anything, it is not amenable to brute force, but the key is people should guard that list of keys, whether it is in a paper form, whether it is in an electronic form, they need to ensure that it does not fall into wrong hands, number one. Number two, those pads with so many keys should never be reused, that is the other condition. Under those two conditions, one time pad is the safest encryption, but as you can see it is not practical, it is not practical to distribute keys like that, but when communications have to be really, really secure, okay, like in, uh, in the case of spies and uh, uh, cases like that, people have used one, one, one time pad. The only time one time pad has been broken when somebody carelessly left a set of keys somewhere in whatever form, that is how it has broken or they carelessly use the same pad again and again and again and somebody noticed the pattern, analyzed the patterns and bro broke it. It is an art, breaking cryptography also is an art, so as many people are indulged in developing new methods of cryptography, an equal number of people are also indulged in breaking it, it is like a cat and mouse game. Desk and one time pad are examples of symmetric key encryption, single key is shared by all users secrecy of the key is a must in this case and the challenge is how to distribute the keys. Asymmetric key encryption we saw, pair of related keys, one for encryption, one for, one for decryption does not matter, one key is made public, the other key has to be kept a secret. Full two way encryption, I want to send you messages securely and you want to send me messages securely, it requires that both of us generate two pairs of one pair of keys. So, full a two way encryption requires two pairs of keys to be completely secure. So, if I want to send you a message, I use your public key, encrypt it, send it to you, only you can decrypt it. To respond, you use my public key, send a message to me, only I have the private key, nobody else, so we can safely communicate and it solves the key, the most important problem of key distribution. It also provides for authentication and non-repudiation. Non-repudiation means I send you a message and claim that I did not send it. So, if I send you a message using my private key and you are able to use my public key to decrypt it, you can prove that only I could have sent it. Unless I have shared my key with somebody private key, if I kept my private key confidential which is the condition, I can never deny that I have sent you that message. So, that is called denying it called repudiation, proving that I proving that I cannot divine, deny, stopping me from denying is called non-repudiation. The problem with asymmetric encryption is computationally very, very complex like some, some types of hashing. So, it can slow down our system significantly. If you use asymmetric encryption for entire communication between any two sessions, it can significantly slow down because computational power required is very high. So, most encryption systems today, they use the asymmetric entry encryption to safely change one set of symmetric key keys, symmetric encryption keys and from that point on they use symmetric encryption to make the computation easier. It is a bit of a complex process, we can show it here how to do it, we due to shortage of times we will skip that, but remember that most encryption systems today use a combination of asymmetric for asymmetric key encryption for the initial exchange of symmetric keys and use that key for asymmetric encryption, symmetric two-way two -way encryption. Examples of if you hear num, num, names like RSA algorithm, Blowfish, ECC, elliptical curve uh, cryptography, l gamma things like that, these are all examples of uh, asymmetric encryption. Asymmetric encryption is commonly used for PKI and digital certificates, digital signatures, cryptocurrencies also use asymmetric encryption and SSL, the foundation of entire internet e-commerce is HTTPS which encrypts all the transmission that is called secure sockets layer secure sockets layer also uses asymmetric encryption for the initial exchange of one set of symmetric keys and from then on they does a two way symmetric encryption. 
the reason being the computational intensity SSL. It is a technology behind encryption on the bulk of internet commerce would not have happened, but for SSL. It leverages both symmetric and asymmetric encryption for authentication that is to prove that a message could have only come from me or only could have come from a server. They use digital certificates when we say this certificate is not valid. It means the certificate with us certificate on the server are not matching. It is a warning that message may not have come from a safe source that comes from things called digital certificates which also uses heavily asymmetric encryption and they use the initial set first transmission using asymmetric key to exchange keys and set up a secure channel and do all the communication on that. And this key the key exchange is used as the key for the entire session. It is a very SSL is what has made our internet commerce safe. We can safely send our data personal data. Uh, financial data over the net because SSL secures while the information is going from my browser to a server and from the server back to my browser secured socket layers is the technology which makes use of both asymmetric and symmetric encryption to make sure that information safely comes to us and nobody else can break it and steal that information. <coughs> In fintech every technology pretty much uses all types of encryptions. They use two-way encryption, they use one-way encryption, they use symmetric key, they use asymmetric key. All types of encryptions are used by pretty much every product or every aspect of fintech to ensure that our information is safe. It is protected for confidentiality, it is protected against lack into attacks on integrity. Let us briefly take a look at some of them. Payment system, which we will see in some detail, it uses SSL, it uses symmetric key algorithms, it uses digital certificates. Credit cards use secure socket layer, they also use symmetric keys for both encryption and decryption. Electronic wallets like the ones we use on our mobiles like Mobiquake and Google Pay and Paytm, they all use SSL, symmetric encryption and digital certificates. Banking and person to peer to peer lending, we will see details of that later, they all use SSL and symmetric encryption. Blockchain uses digital certificates, symmetric encryption and hashing one way encryption. Blockchain we see heavily leverages one of the techno one of the, the tools which heavily uses this technology of one way encryption. Incidentally email for example, cryptocurrencies also use SSL symmetric encryption. Cryptocurrencies sometimes also use asymmetric encryption to prove identities. Email uses message digest remember this is one way message digest heavily to ensure that messages are reached with are not tampered on the way. For example, you have sent me an email that I am a, you are a teach my teacher you have sent me an email that I have failed you have failed is what you have sent me. How do I make sure that nobody has intercepted that message if you actually sent me that you have passed and what I have received is you have failed. So, somebody wants to play a prank on me, they have intercepted that email, changed pass to fail. How do I make sure that the two are the same? So, the way it is done is called using a technology called message digest. You send me an email, you also do a hash of that email called the digest, you send it to me in a separate email. Hopefully, we are assuming that nobody will steal both. So, you have sent me the message, you have sent me its hash. I once I receive the email, I calculate my own hash, I match the two, I match the two. If the two do not match, then I know that the message that has been sent to me has been tampered with by somebody. If the two match, I know that the message you have sent is what? It does not mean that somebody has not seen it, it just ensures that what you have sent me is what you have, what I have received is what you have sent me. So, email uses hashing or message digest and it also many times uses SSL. So, as we can see every every technology, every product under uh, fintech uses various kinds of encryption. Here is an example of blockchain and how it uses hashing. It is technologically quite complex to explain, it will take a whole session by itself. In the session on blockchain, I will try to explain how this works. But in brief, blockchain 
is called blockchain, it consists of blocks of information. They are all linked to each other by a pointer, what you call as a pointer, that is why it is called set of blocks linked. Uh, the way it works is it grows in this form, the blockchain grows like this. First block gets formed, second block gets formed, third block, fourth block and all. So, I am at whenever a new block, let us say I am forming this block, whenever I am forming this block and linking it to the previous block, what I do is I put all the data encrypt it, I put a timestamp, I took the hash, I take the hash of the previous block and store it here. I have to compress, remember hash always results in a string of fixed length. So, this big block of data becomes a small string, set of strings which encapsulates this. So, I put include that in my part of my block. If somebody adds a next block, they take this and include in their hash. Now, the beauty is if I want to understand what is there, if somebody wants to break, you want to replace this block with a different block of their own, they will have to calculate this hash again. To calculate this hash, they need to know this hash. So, they have to go and calculate this again. To replace this hash, to replace the data here, they have to calculate the hash of this. Likewise, if, if the blockchain has grown in this form, if somebody wants to replace the data here with corrupt data, some wrong data, some want to tamper with this, to do this, they have to go back and calculate the hash of all the ones. They have to start from here, calculate the hash, 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 hash. Each of them is mathematically very complex. By the time I come to this, x more blocks have been added, equal number of blocks would have been added. So, I start with the next one to the whole process. It becomes mathematically, computationally impossible. If you do not understand right now, do not worry, I will try to explain later. But blockchains are one technology which uses this concept of hashing or a one way encryption to secure the, to make it tamper proof, to secure the information, to make it very difficult or practically impossible to replace data, to steal this data and replace it with corrupted data, which will change all the transactions. So, that is also the importance why we need to understand cryptography. cryptography. One whole foundation of fintech is based on uh, hashing or one way encryption. Okay. So, I in brief today we took a look at a uh, very complex field. If you are have, if many of you are having difficulty understanding it fully, please go back and see it again. It is a complex subject, we just touch the surface, we just put our finger and check how hot it is. Like we checking the temperature in a pot, just touch the finger and touched what is cryptography? It is an art and science of converting plain text into cipher text, text that nobody can see, even if they capture they will not be able to make sense, convert it back into plain text. We have seen that we have plain text, cipher text, the process to do it called algorithm to change the values, we use the key, we encrypt one way, decrypt one way, there are types of cryptography, one way encryption, two way encryption, convert encrypt, decrypt, recover the original text, various uses for that, one way encryption, convert, leave it there, various uses for that too. Also we saw symmetric key encryption, same key used to convert and decrypt, uh, encrypt and decrypt, computationally simple requires less power, but distribution of key is a huge problem. That problem is solved by asymmetric encryption, one key where if I encrypt, one key to decrypt. So, we keep one key private, make the other key open, uh, make the other key public using this public key is available to everyone. So, any two people can safely exchange any message by generating two pairs of keys and making one key each public, but generating that pair of keys is a very complex process doing the encryption decryption is a computationally very complex process. So, many systems do both, they use the initial set of asymmetric encryption to safely exchange one key common key use that key for symmetric encryption between all of them. That is how it, the challenge of public key, the key distribution has been solved. Then we have seen various applications of cryptography and fintech uses all various products of fintech use all types of cryptography. Even hashing, one way is encryption is essentially one of the foundations of what makes blockchains so tamper proof and can be open to the public. So, with that we come to the end of the third session. In the next session we look at the other aspects of fintech. Thank you.